My older sibling and I were staying home in a town in Ohio, smaller in population than the graduating class from the city we moved from. My sibling was grounded, which meant both the house phone and their cell phone were locked in my dad's gun safe, and neither of us knew the combination. The reason for the grounding was something minor, which I can't quite recall now. Our grandparents lived down the street, and our great-grandmother lives in a small house they built on their property. This arrangement allowed her to live independently while still being close to family. My parents mentioned they were going to check on my great-grandmother as my grandparents were out of town that day. Afterward, they said they'd return and we'd order pizza. This plan sounded perfect to seven-year-old me and my 14-year-old sibling. We played video games for a while, growing hungry and wondering when our parents would return. About two hours after they left, I heard a knock on the door. We thought our parents had already ordered pizza, so we were excited. We saved the game and hurried downstairs. Approaching the door, which featured a large window, I saw a very tall, lean, white man with short black hair and scruffy facial hair. He was around 25 years old. His presence was weird because in our small town, everyone knew everyone. And to me, he was a stranger. I gestured one second with my finger and closed the curtain. I turned around, wanting to open the door when I saw my sibling staring at the door in disbelief, having seen the man too. He also didn't know the man, and he told me not to open the door. I remember my sibling walking to the door and asking the man, Can I help you? Our parents aren't home and we are not allowed to open the door. After a few seconds, the man said, I'm here for the car. Can you let me wait for your parents inside the house? Sorry, I am not allowed to let anyone inside. Can you wait in the car till my parents are home? My brother said. We heard a soft grin from the man, followed by silence. We looked at each other, not knowing what action we should take. We jumped and realized this was real. The man was trying to get in. The knocking turned into banging and kept rattling the doorknob. We were terrified, and there was no way to call our parents. My sibling took my hand, and we hurried to the kitchen. He grabbed a knife, and we ran to the laundry room where we hid. We clung to each other, hoping our parents would be home soon. Then the knocking stopped. I whispered to my brother, Can we leave? No, we wait till mom and dad are home, he said. About five minutes later, which felt like hours, we heard the front door opening. My sibling gripped the knife tighter, ready to defend us. The footsteps entered the house. First, we heard some rustling at the door. Then the footsteps moved into the living room. We heard the man drop something on the couch, followed by the sound of footsteps continuing into the kitchen. Cabinets were opened and closed, followed by rummaging through cutlery. Even at seven years old, I understood that he had taken a knife or something to potentially harm us. The footsteps grew closer and closer until they stopped right in front of our door. Our hearts raced. I had never been so scared in my life. Then we heard, Kids, where are you? We are home. It was Mom. We opened the door and rushed into Mom's arms in tears. She was surprised, holding two pizza boxes which she dropped, puzzled at seeing her kids in tears. She listened as we told her about the man outside with a crying voice, but she just laughed. My dad was outside talking to him. She explained that the man was there to inquire about buying a broken down car in our driveway and claimed to be a mechanic. My mom felt terrible about our scare, but found the situation somewhat amusing. The man stepped inside and realized he had frightened us. He expressed his regret. We were comforted with hugs and promises that the phones wouldn't be locked up when they were gone again. Despite the evening ending with pizza, the incident left us with lingering sobs. But as an adult, something about that night still bothers me. Why would an adult man pound on the door and shake the handle so vigorously? trying desperately to enter a house where clearly the parents weren't home or a child had asked for a moment to fetch them. Why would someone inquire about a car, which wasn't marked for sale, so late at night, around 10 p.m.? 
My parents brushed off the incident lightly, but looking back, the man's behavior doesn't strike me as typical adult conduct. And frankly, I shudder to think what might have happened if my parents hadn't come home when they did. I'm just an average American guy. I work at a local grocery store where I stack shelves, help customers, those sort of things. My name is Jake and I'm 26 years old. I live in a small apartment on the outskirts of town. It's nothing fancy, but it's mine and it's peaceful. Or at least it was until that Thursday night. Okay, so here's the deal. I've always been a bit of a loner, preferring quiet nights into going out. After work, I usually grab some takeout, binge watch some series, or lose myself in a video game. It wasn't a sound that started this nightmare. No, it was a feeling. Do you ever get that prickly sensation on the back of your neck? Like someone's eyes are burning into you? Yeah, that's what I felt. It started one evening on my way home from work. The streets were mostly empty, and the streetlights have this eerie vibe. I remember I was just crossing the park, which is kind of creepy after dark. That's when I started to get this weird feeling someone was watching me. I turned around, expecting to catch a pair of eyes lurking behind the bushes or something, but there was nobody. I chuckled to myself, thinking I was just being paranoid. But as I continued my walk, the feeling didn't go away. It grew stronger, so I quickened my pace, my heart starting to race. I didn't look back again. I didn't want to know if someone was actually there. When I got to my apartment, I locked the door behind me and leaned against it, trying to catch my breath. Get a grip, Jake, I told myself, but deep down I couldn't shake the feeling that it wasn't just paranoia. That night, every little noise made me jump. I barely slept, tossing and turning, listening to the sounds of the night. The next day, I tried to brush it off. Work was the same as always, busy and distracting, but as the day wore on, I couldn't help but dread the walk home. When it was time to leave, I hesitated at the door. I decided to take a different route home, avoiding the park. The streets were busier this way, with people still out and about, and it made me feel safer. But even so, that eerie feeling lingered, a constant companion as I walked. As I approached my apartment building, I glanced around nervously, expecting to see someone standing in the shadows, but there was no one. I let out a sigh of relief and hurried inside, locking the door behind me once more. I tried to relax to settle into my usual evening routine, but it didn't matter. I remained on edge. Every creak of the apartment building set me on high alert. Who could be watching me and why? I couldn't concentrate on anything my thoughts consumed by the events of the past two days. It was then, in the middle of the night, that it happened. The handle of the door twisted. Someone was trying to get in. My heart stopped. I was paralyzed with fear, expecting it to burst open at any moment. But it didn't. After what felt like hours, but in reality was probably only seconds, the sound stopped, replaced by a silence that weighed down on me. I didn't sleep that night. How could I? Someone had tried to enter my apartment. The fear was no longer just a feeling. It was real. I was being targeted, but I didn't know why or by whom. As the first light of dawn crept into my apartment, I made a decision. I couldn't go on like this, living in fear, jumping at shadows. I needed to find out who was watching me, who had followed me home, who had tried my door in the middle of the night. But as I prepared to face the day, I couldn't shake the feeling that I was stepping into something much bigger, much darker than I could have ever imagined. Little did I know that my life was about to change forever. The next day, I decided I needed a plan. First thing, I went out and bought a better lock for my door. I also got one of those small security cameras. You know, just a simple one that connects to your phone. I wasn't sure if it would help, but it made me feel a bit better like I was doing something at least. That evening, I installed the camera above my front door, pointing straight at the entrance. I kept checking my phone, looking at the live feed from the camera, expecting to see the guy who was following me standing there. 
but there was nothing, just the quiet hallway of my apartment building. I tried to keep busy, watching TV and cleaning up around the apartment, anything to keep my mind off things. But no matter what I did, I couldn't shake off the feeling of being watched. It was like I could feel eyes on me, even though I was alone in my apartment. Night came, and with it, the fear grew once again. I double-checked the new lock on my door and kept my phone close, the security camera app open and running. I tried to watch a movie, but I couldn't really focus. It felt like the longest night ever in my life. Then after a few hours, it happened. It was late, really late, and I was half asleep on the couch when my phone beeped. It was an alert from the security camera. My heart raced as I grabbed the phone, expecting the worst. There on the screen in the hallway was a figure. It was hard to make out details, but someone was definitely there. He was standing right outside my door. I didn't know what to do. I was frozen, only staring at the screen. The figure just stood there, not moving. Then after a few minutes, the figure moved away. It disappeared from the camera's view. I was freaking out. Someone was definitely targeting me, but I had no idea why. I didn't sleep at all for the rest of the night, just sat there, watching my phone, waiting for the figure to come back, but it didn't. The next morning, I was messed up. Didn't sleep much and kept thinking of the figure. I knew I had to do something, so I decided to go to the police. I took my phone with me, the video from the security camera saved. After a 10 minute drive, I arrived at the police. They were nice, listened to me and watched the video. They said they would keep an eye on my apartment building and patrol the area more at night. And if the figure came back one call and the police would be there in minutes. I didn't want to go back to my apartment, but I didn't have anywhere else to go. So I went back. The police's promise to patrol the area. It was my only comfort. Days passed and nothing unusual happened. No one in the hallway, no weird noises at my door. I started to relax a bit. Maybe the guy got scared off by the police patrols, or maybe he realized I wasn't worth the trouble. Either way, I was just glad it was over. I wish I could say that was the end of it, that everything went back to normal, but life isn't that simple, is it? One evening I got back from work and there was a note slid under my door. It was just one word, get out. The fear came back, stronger than before. I felt it wasn't over. This person, whoever they were, wasn't done with me yet. But this time, I wasn't going to let them scare me. I had the police on my side, and I was going to do whatever it took to feel safe again. After that note, I thought a lot about what to do. I told myself I wouldn't be scared anymore. I had talked to the police, and they said they'd help me. So I tried to live like normal, but deep down, I felt like things weren't finished yet. One night, while I was trying to watch a show, my phone made a noise. It was the app from my security camera. My heart started beating fast as I looked at my phone. The camera showed the hallway outside my door, and there he was again, the person who had been scaring me. This time I could see something shiny and metal in his hand. I felt really scared, but I knew I had to act fast. I called the police right away. They answered quickly and said they'd be there in two minutes. Right after I hung up, I heard a strange sound at my door. It was like metal clicking against metal. I looked back at my phone and saw the man trying to do something to my door lock with the metal thing in his hand. I couldn't keep quiet. I said, I called the police and they're on their way, so please just leave. He stopped and said something that really confused me. Get out of my apartment right now, he yelled back. I didn't understand. Why would he say that? It was my apartment, not his. But then, just a few seconds later, I heard other voices. It was the police. They were outside telling the man to put down his tool and get on the ground. It was all happening so fast. The police came in after they caught him. They told me the man used to live in the building but had to leave because he couldn't pay his bills anymore. They also said he might have problems with thinking clearly and understanding things right. Weeks went by and nothing scary happened again. 
I started to feel safe once more, and I thought a lot about the man. I felt sorry for him. When I turned 18, my parents made me leave home. It was really hard not having a place to live. Being forced out of your home, for any reason, feels terrible. Understanding what that man might have felt helped me get over the scary things that happened. Now I feel okay again. I'm glad to be safe and to understand a little better why people might do strange or scary things. It doesn't make it right, but it helps me not to be so afraid. My name is Eve, and life's pretty straightforward for me. I work from home, doing website support for a big company. This means I spend a lot of time in front of my computer, but also have the freedom to make my own schedule. This flexibility allowed me to move to a small town in search of some peace, away from the noise and rush of the city. My days are quiet, filled with work, sometimes a bit of gardening, and in the evenings, I take walks around the neighborhood. I like the solitude. After some personally rough times, this was the perfect way for me to clear my thoughts without the city chaos surrounding me. One evening, things started to get weird. I was up late working on a project with my team when my concentration was interrupted by a phone call. I removed my headphones with the intention to pick up the phone, but declined. Am I hearing this right? Are those footsteps? At first I thought they were further away, but then I realized the footsteps were right next to my house. I got up, trying to convince myself I was just being paranoid. I followed the sound of the footsteps to the back door, my hands shaking a bit as I reached for the light switch. The moment the backyard lit up, the footsteps stopped. There was silence for a second, followed by the sound of someone running away. I stood there shocked. Was it a burglar? I whispered. But my house lights were on, so why would a burglar target this house? I didn't call the police because, well, the person hadn't actually done anything wrong, right? They ran off when I turned on the light, so I tried to convince myself it was just someone passing through, maybe a lost drunk. But then again, why would they run away when the lights turned on? Looking back, this was a naive thought. No one would walk around a house this late at night, especially in the neighborhood I was living in. I called a friend and explained everything. He told me to make sure the doors and windows were all locked. It was probably an attempt. They wouldn't try it again. That would just be stupidly dumb, he said. This reassured me. And after the call, I told my colleagues I was tired and wanted to go to bed early. Nothing happened until two days later. I followed my normal routine and went to bed around 10 p.m. I watched some TV, put the sleep timer mode on, and eventually fell asleep. I woke up in the middle of the night to a storm. Thunder rumbled and lightning flashed. I looked at the clock, 3 a.m. Weird, I thought. I never wake up during a storm. I took my phone thinking maybe someone had called, and that was why I woke up. There were no missed calls. What the hell disturbed my sleep, I wondered. I put the phone away and scanned around my bedroom. There was nothing wrong, so I laid down wanting to get back to sleep. My eyes widened and I was instantly awake again. It was the sound of my closet door. It was faint, but I was sure I heard it correctly. I'm just tired, I thought, convincing myself it was nothing to worry about. Just to be sure, I sat up and looked at the closet. A chill ran down my whole body as I saw the closet door was slightly ajar. I knew I had closed it before going to bed. I tried to rationalize it first, but my gut feeling overtook me. I had to check it. I wouldn't be able to sleep otherwise. I got out of bed and walked toward the closet. As I got closer, I froze. Soft breathing, panic rushed in. I knew I had to act cool, pretend I was just heading to the bathroom or something. I had to because what would happen if he knew I knew? I left the bedroom, hoping with every step that I wouldn't hear the closet door open. Thankfully, it didn't. 
I kept the bedroom door open to keep pretending nothing was wrong. I quietly went downstairs. The front door makes too much noise, so I made my exit through the back door and left it open. My phone was still in my bedroom, so I rushed to my neighbor's house, keeping my eyes on my bedroom window, hoping I wouldn't see anyone. I didn't. I arrived at my neighbor's house and knocked on their door. They were surprised to see me at this hour, but they could tell something was terribly wrong. I told them what happened, and right away they called the cops for me. A police car was nearby, and the operator told my neighbor they'd be at my house in two minutes. They agreed not to use the sirens so as not to alert the intruder, since there was still a possibility he thought I was still in the house. We waited together. A minute passed when someone knocked on my neighbor's door and called out, Police here. My neighbor opened the door, and they asked if I was okay to guide them. Without a second thought, I agreed, and we rushed toward my house. Guns drawn, they yelled for the intruder to come out. Then this dirty, disheveled man stumbled out of the closet. He looked straight at me, his eyes wide and unsettling. He wasn't wearing pants, which made the whole situation even more disturbing. And his smell? It was awful. The police took him away. They told me he was homeless and seemed mentally unstable. They questioned him the next day and found out he had somehow gotten into my house. They guessed he might have come in through a window and locked it behind him so I wouldn't get suspicious. After that night, I couldn't stop thinking about what might have happened if I hadn't woken up during the storm. It's scary, thinking about the what-ifs. Mentally unstable or not, the intruder was a real threat. But now it's just a thought, just a what if that didn't happen. I've made some changes since then, added more locks, got a security system, and I check my windows every night. I feel safe again, but I'll never forget that night.